Hi, it's Paul from Model Builder International again. Uh, today we're going to have a look through a new book from Luftfahrt Verlag Start. This one is mit der Kamera and the front, basically following LG2 and JG77. Okay, so let's have a quick look through the pages of the book, not everything. Uh, start with, obviously, with the camera at the front, with 1J LG2, and then JG77, obviously LG2 turned into LG, uh, JG77 in 1942. So the book has about 240 pages, there's 54 colour photographs, 170 black and white photographs, uh, 13 colour profiles, and there's 14 maps in here as well. Obviously the colour photos are of particular interest since they're so rare from wartime Germany. Um, so, we'll start off. I'll get in the middle there. Um, obviously the, the cover is also a black and white photograph. And uh, basically you won't have seen any of these photographs before either, neither the colour nor the black and white ones. Uh, if I can remember this, the uh, the colour photographs, of, it's basically you've, the story behind the book is we're following a war reporter who joined um, JG2 at the Channel in 1941 and then f they moved through the Balkans in the Balkan conflict and then up to Russia and he basically stayed with them all that time up to the end of 41 and then the last bit is colour slides in 1942 of the um, the boss of JG 77 um, so that's basically the story and it's all new stuff um, as the photographs come from the war reporter um, basically those series of photographs have come to surface and it's also topped up with photographs from private collections of the technicians and the pilots um, in the Geschwader as well. So table of contents starts off with um, Poland campaign basically 1938 to 40, Western campaign operations against England from 40 to 41, um, then the Balkans um, from March to June uh, Russian campaign and defensive operations in Romania from uh, June 41 to January 42 and then Major Gordon at Golob um, in the Crimea May to July 1942 and this is when um, JG2 LG2 had turned into Jagishvara 77. So I've ch chosen a few random pages to sort of have a quick look at to show you what's in here so we'll start off with, there's a foreword that explains um, basically where the book came from, obviously done a bit better than I just uh, just did, um, but that's sort of the story behind the book, where the photos have come from and so on. And here we are starting, um, what's this, uh, back in Germany, just before the war. And this is the sort of quality of photograph you'll get all the way through. Notice there's a little copyright mark in all the photographs because people keep scanning these and pretending that they own them and uh, trying to sell them. Um, so then, let's jump forward. Second chapter is the Western Campaign. You can see there's... Um, basically, it's the text is German-English. English is perfect. It's uh, basically following along, telling the story of the photographs. Uh, the captions basically tell you exactly what's going on in the photograph, and the text gives you, should we say, the big picture of what is going on. Um, but this, the book is mostly revolves around the photographs. Oh, so we got, this is what the maps uh, look like. The maps are in, ger in German, but from reading the English text, you know basically what's going on and what everything is pointing to. So next one, yeah, this is at a um, channel, uh, an XRF uh, airfield on the Channel Coast, 
lots of uh, Royal Air Force aircraft were abandoned there in various states of disrepute and here's a Blenheim um, that ground crew were just sat on. Um, about three operations against England. That's the next one. Here's some interesting camouflage um, taken on August the 15th. Um, there's lots of things in here as it goes through. The colour photographs and the black and white photographs have shed some new light on the actual colours used on the aircraft. Um, so in this book you will find there's um, new, should we say, um, new proof that the colours were not what everybody quite thought they were. And there's some pretty interesting colour schemes on aircraft as well. Um, like a, an aircraft from North Africa in a desert uh, camouflage that ended up in Russia and obviously it had to be a bit repainted. Um, so I think that's the next thing we can... One thing that they can use to often tie things down is the victory markings on the tails because they'll know with the certain dates, you know, they'd look at a tail and go, oh, there's 26 on there, so it must have been taken. The 26th appeared on a certain date, the 27th appeared on a certain date, the photograph must have been taken between the two dates. So there's a fair bit of that sort of thing going on. Um, here's a, one of the one of the fifty odd colour photographs, and I'll just point out these are, should say, genuinely colour photographs um, taken in nineteen forty to forty two. They're not colourised photographs as you as you see on the internet these days. Um, this is a. Da -da -da. 109D at a flying school in Germany. Let's have a look at the next one. Yeah, another colour one. Um, uh, here's, I think this is one of the changes. This is now a grey uh, aircraft number. Previously they were thought to be thought to be brown, but obviously with black and white photographs it's tough to sometimes tell the difference. Let's see there. You can still make out previous uh, manufacturer's code on there as well. And then, well, pilots sat, uh, sat waiting. Wing four, um, basically they moved down uh, to the Balkans and support the invasion of Crete. That's some pretty interesting photographs in, in this section as you go through it. Notably moving through uh, this section, there was basically they were jumping around from airfield to airfield um, faster than the ground crew could, could keep up with them. So you had a, a small group of ground crew basically uh, just doing the best they could with sleeping in tents, uh, with very little equipment. Um, and also moving down through these countries, there's photographs of quite a few different types of aircraft. Um, here's some PZL P-11 fighters from Romanian Air Force. Here's an IRA-80, IAR-80 um, of the Romanian Air Force. And there's quite a few photographs of aircraft, <coughs> aircraft from Balkan countries. Let's have a look. Let's see what's here. And this is Sort of ground crew living in the tents and just making the best they can. But some nice, nice scenery shots. Here, basically, you can see the same mountain in the background. Uh, one's colour, one's black and white, obviously. And you can see here they went all the way down to the very bottom of Greece um, before heading back up um, for the invasion of Russia. And this is volume five or chapter five, um, Russian campaign. And they're also involved in defensive operations in Romania. That's basically they were um, they were based around the Romanian oil fields to protect those. Um, there's a nice scenic sort of picture. There's how dark that aircraft is. Um, and it's all modeling, you can see there's 
uh, these profiles, there's quite a few of these profiles, and I say there's uh, 13 of this sort of profile throughout the book. And then, um, particularly resonate with this, having done that before, working on uh, working on helicopters, you end up with uh, you often end up in some sort of weird place, just squeezing in somewhere just so you can fix something. And this aircraft was destined for North Africa, but had a hasty uh, green blot just put on it, and ended up in Russia. Um, uh, in fact, I think the green is actually part of the, part of the tropical scheme at this point. Um, basically, it's just ended up in Russia. So there's nothing to stop you from um, doing a, an aircraft and saying it's in Russia with a tropical tropical paint scheme. Um, was the one I remember doing as well. Oh, putting. Uh, Blowing hot air into aircraft engines in the winter. I remember doing that one before up inside the north of Norway. Um, basically to so the engines will, engines will start. Um, and then, so this is um, basically chapter six, Major Golob. Um, he was actually the first pilot to get 150 uh, kills, but you probably don't hear much about him because he had a he had a real good knack of making sure he wasn't in the right place at the right time to get photographed. He was really good at avoiding the cameras. So there's not that many photographs of him. And, um, and then at a certain point he was, um, I think it's once after he got 150 actually, I think, he was sent back to uh, Germany and flew a desk for most of the rest of the war. So that's maybe why he's not so familiar, but he was very familiar at the start of the war. and. The sort of speculating the person who took all the photographs of him must have known him pretty well for to allow all these photographs to get taken. And there's him. That's one of the gun turrets on the Maxim Gorky coastal barrier, uh, coastal battery in the Crimea. And at the end of the book, we've got this is all the victories of LG2. And this is all the losses of LG2. And then the way back here, we've got um, the book about the books, uh, Emblems of the Lovecraft of Volume 1. We did a review on that one a while ago, the videos uh, on, on the site. And also these two decal sheets, we'll have a closer look at those in a future video. But there's um, Oh, I think we've already looked at that one, but there is a decals. We'll be looking at this one, which basically is some aircraft out of this book. Um, and we've got another couple of things to do videos on. So, well, all the, it's a pretty neat book. There's um, nothing quite like it. Their books are always uh, pretty interesting, um, always full of original photographs. Um, 99% of which have never been published before. The best place to buy the book is direct from the publisher. They'll ship to you from Germany. Their prices are as good as anybody else's, but you get the added bonus if you buy from the publisher, then they see a bit more of the money. They don't have to split the profits with a second retailer. And with them making a bit more of the money means they can publish more books, do more Luftwaffe in focus magazines and so on. So anyway, I'll put a link to the website is underneath the uh, video and hope you have enjoyed having a look through the pages.